Was that Daniel? Yep. Get that fucking kid out of there. <laughs> Good God. He's got nowhere to go, but if they did just leave him on Earth by himself, he'd be better off. He's got nowhere to go but up. ask you a question. Do you like things in 60 second increments like a sports fan might do with the play of the game? We take the moments and break them down, dissect the guts, discuss the glory. (laughs) Sometimes Ryan talks about his dick, but generally we're all here to give you the scoop, trivia, and analysis of this great piece of entertainment history, 1986's Transformers the movie. Actually, I said that incorrectly. The Transformers the movie. That is the proper title. The of Transformers film. the movie. 40, it is the Transformers the movie. 40 it's minutes in. The, it's called The Transformers the movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good God. <laughs> I like when Caleb comes across something he just blows his mind. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. Uh, so, uh, not Caleb, but the, t- the official no, title no, of this fine. movie. No, it's fine. This is quite ridiculous. I'm, I'm pretty... I'm, I, it, then I, it just... I'm pr- Here we are at episode 40, <laughs> covering the 3901 to the 40 minute mark. Mm-hmm. I am your minute by minute moderator, Aaron, and to my right are the wheelbarrow and thimble to my race car, the B&O in Pennsylvania to my reading railroad, the States and Virginia Avenue to my St. Charles place. Guys, please pass go and introduce yourselves. The thimble and the wheelbarrow? Those are like the worst ones in the game. No, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm totally the wheelbarrow. I'm Caleb. <laughs> I'll take that now. All right, well, by process want? of elimination, I am the th- I'm Ryan the Thimble Jet. You, sn- you snooze, you lose, dude. <laughs> you do. Last episode, uh, Galvatron piloting Cyclonus shoots up basically everything except Ultra Magnus. RC upends Hot Rod's eggs to win the Autopod Decepticast <laughs> sick bird of the movie, and Dinobots just won't get on those fucking ships. And where that brings us to uh, Ultra Magnus. Uh, previously was annoyed at Blur's incompetence, and as we start this minute, he commands Hot Rod and Cup to uh, go ahead and get those bots yeah, on the ship. Yeah, you and deal with these assholes. <laughs> I that that is, and it's right up top, right at the thirty-nine minute mark. Um, I mean, I don't know why they would have a better time of it than Blur, or is he just like I, I can't deal with these no, tiny brain jerks, and who cares if Cup and Hot Rod die? <laughs> He's, he's delegating. Maybe <laughs> we're to believe that Cup and Hot Rod have a better relationship with the Dinobots? Uh, Cup certainly seems to, as we'll see coming up. Sure, yes, that's true. Well, we, so at this point, we see Cup sort of force uh, Slag up a uh, ramp here. Mm-hmm. Is that Slag? I always that was Slag. Mix up their no, names. What's... And then Hot Rod constructs a lasso with a piece of dental floss. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, as a transformer, what that's pretty it? thick. Gets it's it just a, a rope of some kind. And he gets it that he just happened to have, and he gets it around Grimlock's neck. He's pulling him yeah, up. Yeah, that's by at thirty nine twelve. Which I do not understand how a lasso is any better than pushing them. And like, and it's and come on, for Christ's sake! I mean, he's he's not. Grimlock is a transformer. Right. So he should just get on this shit. Right. Yeah. That's what I. I like that's why I'm saying I'm like I'm fed up with it. They yeah. Had, <laughs> did, did, like you well, said in the last minute, it just goes on to way too long. Yeah. Did they not have the Dinobots creating munitions on one of the moon bases <laughs> earlier? They have early the early? ability to man to like run a factory, yeah. an explosives factory. To manufacture <laughs> explosives. <laughs> Yet you're having to lasso them to get them up on the ship. Hey man, just a reminder, they're dumb. They, are. they don't just follow orders. They are. <laughs> Boy, they fucking nail that shit to the floor over and over in this movie, just yeah. hitting you over the head with how that's dumb right. the Dinobots are. And that's our, and that's that's all they got in their arsenal. That's it. I mean they're strong. Yeah, I guess so. <sighs> Yeah, they turn into cool dinos. Mm. So here's what motivates them, though. Uh, the sweeps with their heads sticking out uh. <laughs> come up from around the corner, attack Hot Rod and the dinos, and that gets them to move Is more just, quickly do up both, the ramp. Do both sweeps have their heads, their faces showing? Uh, let's rewind here. I'm I just, want, uh, out of cu- just out of pure curiosity. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hot Rod Cup! 
Do um, it! On he next, can't! Next on Unsolved Mysteries. I watched a lot of that the other day. It's a, it's the other day, really? Is it on, it's uh, on YouTube. Is it Hold Up? Yeah, it's great. Or was it maybe on Hulu? I don't know. On next on Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, Fuck all don't, that. Don't, and I fucked don't it up. fucking worry about it. Don't, no, seriously. I if, if I knew it was this difficult, I wouldn't have you do it. And I'm not just insulting <laughs> you. Look, <laughs> <laughs> he's like flapping. He's just flapping. Flapping. he's just flapping. He's just flapping right there. Nope. Uh, no, just only one, one face showing. showing. Um. So. So After that attack, everybody runs up the ramp. The mm -hmm. ramp kind of closes. Actually, this part looks cool. All the yeah. drawings of the ship yeah, look the ship's great. awesome. Yeah. Um, Cup runs to the pilot seat. He Ugh. starts to tell an old war story about Alpha 9 and Petro Rabbits. <laughs> Petro Rabbits. Which... What are Petro Rabbits? Well, uh, this Grimlock's big stupid face at 3924, right in Cup's area. Again, I guess it's supposed to be funny. The Petro Rabbits actually... Um, is directly lifted from Of Mice and Men. It's supposed to be Lenny. Like, tell me about the rabbits, oh, George. No and Grimlock's shit. like, tell me about Petrol Rabbits. So did, this is like a pretentious wow. uh, writing move here that I Friedman did, pulled I out of I did his not sack. make that connection. Yeah. So, wow. That puts a whole different spin on this whole sequence for me. Yeah, this movie is intellectual. It's levels yeah. upon yeah. levels. Yeah, I mean, have you listened to the original script? It's fucking, it's real philosophical. <laughs> Rooted in American classics. <laughs> So, uh, as we referred to, Grimlock sticks his nose in Cup's face. He's excited to hear a story. Cup yells at him, get out of his face. But here's the deal. Grimlock loves Cup's war stories, guys. He does. He does. I mean, they're fun. They should have said, hey, Grimlock, get on the ship and I'll tell you some war stories. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Cup explains that we're living one of those war stories right now. Engage the boosters for Cybertron's sake. Grimlock asks about the Petro Rabbits again. These guys cannot be shaken. And, um, you know, Grimlock just can't help himself when it comes to annoying I do, I do right like now. how they portray Grimlock here as, like, kind of crouching on the console, like, looking up at Cup. To I, me, I feel like he's devolved into a sad <laughs> dog begging for yes, attention. He does That's feel exactly. like with Lucy. If I'm up on the so, couch and she just comes up and puts her head there, and I pet her a little bit, and she just puts her head even more in my face. That's what she's doing. I, I do think if they're going to play this, they need to play it all the way, and I think they did well with how they portrayed Grimlock in this particular sequence where well, he is like a dog begging for a, a dog bone. Like, he's totally... <laughs> and that bone is a story... Is about Petro Rabbits. About Petro Rabbits. Cup yells, uh, contact, and the ship engages with little lifty boosters and then horizontal <laughs> boosters, both in full effect. Uh, we definitely need to do a side by side on this because do you recall seeing this scene before? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so is... we are at uh, thirty nine forty five where the boosters ignite. These are the exact same booster animations as when the shuttle took off of the moon base earlier in the movie, I... and uh, the only difference is they've got a different background. So it was a Cybertronic back space background. Are you before, saying no, that we background. used the same scene twice? I mean, I know that's a controversial statement, but. Yes. It's the I why wouldn't you? I mean it looks good. Just fucking yeah. Actually it's my favorite. It's great. It's one of my favorite uh, little launchy mm -hmm. pieces of animation of all time. Makes sense, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they uh start to take off. Yep. And uh the sweeps are going to chase them a little bit. Pew pew pew. Do a little pew pew action. And we cut to cu uh, or Springer and Daniel running toward their shuttle. That's right, and Springer gets to say the line, Looks like we're shipmates, Squirt. Which is in the original script. And that is where this uh, ends, right? As we see Ultra Magnus and Perceptor, of all people. Oh, we saw Perceptor actually firing earlier in the movie. He was in the trenches outside of Autobot City. but So we see them firing upon the Decepticons, covering these guys as they get up the ship. And that's where we are. It's it's amazing if you look at that scene. Daniel's r literally running over a hole. A hole? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you, the, it would have been funny if you'd have fallen in and cracked his teeth on the, the metal. The listeners can't see this, but it's just more of a testament to my case that Daniel is right at the 40 second D mark. Is, mm, D, is for, D is for danger. <laughs> D is for endangerment. Let's uh, uh, let's uh, make that meme happen again. Let's try and do it. Uh, oh, I it was very so. popular. It, it <laughs> fell flat. It fell so flat on Twitter. Well, I thought. What, it would what be... was it you did recently? The, oh, the eleven plus seven thing. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No. See, you don't even got it right. You don't even know. So I, I put so six. I put yeah. six from the show Blossom. Oh, six. That's right. 
her picture and a picture of eleven from Stranger Things, and I just put the the, the link. equals equals seventeen six plus eleven. Yeah, I thought crickets. Would, I thought it would go viral. It, I love how disappointed you are when it's like it, Aaron sitting here giggling as he's writing his like it, bon mots that he yeah. hits us with. <laughs> it, you're, bon you're, you're so flat. It you, felt I just so picture flat. like, yeah, yeah. I Yo, did that. I was and proud of myself. And then later you're like, oh. <laughs> I, yeah, so I've decided that. Oh, my feelings. I've decided like on Twitter. You got to keep it up, man. I don't know. I keep don't... it up. That was good. <laughs> I it's just because nobody liked it doesn't mean it wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just don't under, I just don't understand uh, the how things get. I don't understand how certain things get traction. I guess the best, tw- the most popular tweet we've ever had is when you posted a picture of the transformers <laughs> the on your shelves, and that I mean. We got like over two thousand views on that. Maybe we, maybe we have a lot of collectors on. Mm-hmm. There. Oh, we yeah, do, we like do. I shit. just I just thought that maybe they'd also appreciate a good joke about six plus of seven, six plus eleven. I wonder if seventeen Stranger Things has the following in uh, the UK that it has here. Oh, I'm sure it does. Know. Maybe. Oh, I'm sure it she's does. British. Yeah, uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Well, shit. Yeah, I'm sure like that shit then. All right, so I've got no voice actors. Thanks, dude. (laughs) Everybody, please, uh, uh, heart heart the Twitter of Caleb's post because he cannot handle it. (laughs) If there is a post that comes from the at apoddcast account that's not quite funny, go ahead and and just like it. Thanks. And maybe repost it because it... Might be poor Caleb who who you're hurting. He's just sitting in his room <laughs> in the dark, Wait a minute. cutting Wait, into this his This all started with something that Ryan posted. <laughs> Let's not for- Yes, I don't remember what that was. I don't think so. Fuck. <laughs> right. So like in and yes, we're, we ended with the Springer running up with Daniel, and like in the script that I'm reading, um, Springer is kind of at least up to this point the hero of the movie. Like he's a total badass in it. I just feel like it, it, the Indiana Jones character really captured Ron Friedman's imagination, and he put a lot into Springer. I'm surprised that there isn't some sort of Vince DiCola esque dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> There's some good Vince DiCola. Uh, oh yeah, this music also, in this sequence like is great. When they're when they're putting the Dinobots up the uh, uh, when the Dinobots are entering the ship, there's some yeah. pretty badass DiCola. Actually, the whole the mu- yeah the the music on this whole sequence is yeah. amazing. I love it. It's really good. Um, uh, I think it's time for. Rip deviations. <laughs> <laughs> so mine uh, in my script, which uh, if you're a new listener, uh, you would know why that, did you start here? <laughs> you would know that uh, my script is a little bit more refined from the script that Ryan follows, and uh, on mine it's basically the same. However, it is notable that they left out a couple of lines when Cup and Hot Rod's ship takes off. In my script, Hot Rod yells. Yahoo! <laughs> We're airborne! And then Grimlock says, Growl! <laughs> I think that might I've be in mine too. <laughs> okay, good. And that's all I've got on mine. Ryan, please I proceed. I have a lot, so I'm going to try to pair it back because a lot of it is just the fighting of the soldiers and stuff. Oh, okay. So, um, Galvatron is watching above the city as, in the last uh, uh, episode, Autobot City was basically a slag heap in ruins Mm -hmm. and and on fire. That's why they're getting in the ships and taking off. Galvatron is watching this and roars with laughter. Scourge comes up to him and salutes as Decepticons rain destruction down from the skies and hillsides looking at the smoldering city. Victory is ours, mighty Galvatron. But not complete. Prepare to drain Earth's energy for absorption by ingester. Oh, so Earth is going to get chomped down. Uh, He says also, I shall not rest until all Autobots and their Earthling allies have been crushed to molecules beneath my heel. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I I hate to interrupt, but Mm -hmm. we haven't seen a single other human form of military force. That's true. Anything. Take any sort of action. So I like wonder if like you know maybe the town over the on the ne- in the next valley is just like 
But they don't like even know what's going on. I don't on. see anything. Uh, keep your eyes down, Marjorie. Yeah. Uh, we don't see that. That's not our problem. I wonder if as just part of a strategic thing, the Ottawa's built their base in as desolate of a place as they could. Although it's gorgeous. We did talk about this. Of, yeah, maybe they did that on purpose to be away from civilization. Well, they need to build it in like the Sahara Desert and not like the lush greenery of ah, the Pacific all that, Northwest. All that sand's going to get in your gears. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Build it over the ocean? Fuck. I don't know. I just, on. I in the just, ocean? Like... The uh, base for the Decepticons in the show, yeah. which was a great build a, idea. Build an yes. island. <laughs> this is the weird part. Okay, they're close up on Galvatron. His eyes gleam with malevolence, and he roars, Then I shall rid myself of Ingester and take my place as lord of all that shall ever be. Good I'm God. like, maybe just think that. That's maybe don't head. scream you it. to say it. Yeah. I like how they, they use the word malevolent very often in this script. I think yes. Friedman was a big fan of that word. Yeah. How about benevolent? Maybe Prime is benevolent and you, you all right, moving on. That's my new restaurant, Bunevolent, and it's all like sticky buns. And you have and you have men with man buns. Uh, oh it's it's an it's an it's an all male. Oh, staff, the commercials right? are X rated. No, okay. They cannot be shown on TV. By man buns, I meant the haircut, not the the top knot buns, yeah. which also sounds sexual. Top knot. Let's get in the top knot position, baby. <laughs> Listeners, what do you think that would look like? Right Maybe in. this is something we should take to. Oh, oh no! Just to after dark, baby. Oh no! All right, let's finish this shit. Um, <laughs> so uh, there is some more fighting, like power glide and warpath fight in here. What? Yep. Uh, I miss those guys. They're battered, but still operational. They zoom in toward Galvatron, um, and uh, forcing him to run and fire at them over his shoulder. Um, then Springer, uh, this is, uh, there's hold on area of rubble, rubble and twisted steel as Galvatron exits the scene, pursued by Warpath and Power Glide. A beat, and then blow, bang, <laughs> exactly, boom, boomba. Uh, then with a sproinging sound, Springer pops up from a hiding place beneath the rubble, like spring. Yeah, like it's fucking spring. I'll put that sound in. Because he's, spring, cause he's it. Springer. Did Robert yes. Friedman name him Springer? That's no a piece springs. Of shit. You need to post. <laughs> you gotta. You're gonna have no to post. Springs. You're gonna have to post that. I will absolutely. No uh, springs. And then Springer says, "In jester, huh?" He springs off rapidly, dodging Decepticon fire. He springs off, springs and springs. Yep, yep, yep. yep. He is Springer. Um, I hate this. <laughs> this is not good. Yeah, and then um, we there's uh, blasters in command in another section with him are Wind Charger, who's dead in the movie, uh, Mirage and Gears, um, who are all back to back firing at the surrounding Decepticons blaster. Keep feeding them fusion fritters and laser latkes. We ain't finished laser yet. Laser latkes. <laughs> is Blaster Jewish? Yeah, that's, I guess, I mean... Is it time for a Seder? <laughs> is this the Passover holiday? And so, you have... <laughs> what? But you gotta say it like... You know I never fight on the Soma but, Shabbos. You gotta be like, but you gotta say it like circuit, like circuit solders. You gotta get alliteration, <laughs> like... Uh, a Cybertronic Seder? S- Cyber Sabbath. Gear says, but not far from, from it, our energy is running low. Then throw something at them, babe! Man, there ain't nothing no Decepticons gonna get from me but flame and shame. Yo! <laughs> hey, at it least he's into... talking the way I want him to talk. Uh, Cyclonus swoops past and bombs Gears to pieces. The force of the blast throws Wind Charger up and away, and Gear Blaster says, Gears? Oh man. <laughs> Looks up, and pieces of gears rain down on him uh, uh, uh. on the blaster's position uh, as an arm, leg, and a torso fall. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, that's God grotesque. damn. Jesus well, that's Friedman. <laughs> he's, if, if he's not murdering an Autobot in the worst possible way, he can't get his dick hard. If he's not murdering an Autobot or making RC look like less exactly. of a contributor to the cause. I think the time has come to hide my pride and run! <laughs> That's Blaster? That's Blaster. Okay. Turns followed by Mirage and other Autobots as they run away. Hot Rod, RC, and Daniel are behind cover. Uh, Hot Rod says, I have bad news and bad news. <laughs> On Hot Rod, RC, and Daniel as he ducks down to rejoin them. Hot Rod continuing, the Decepticons are coming and we're trapped. Oh, RC, tongue in cheek. What's the bad news? Hot Rod, we're out of ammo. Get down, Dano. <laughs> and then... Oh, God. Uh, Daniel says, the news just got good. As Cup and Springer come up, Springer uses a war club improvised of a fallen, melted iron beam and bashes one Decepticon through the torso, keeps spinning in a karate movement, sweeps the legs out from two more Decepticons, turns and spins his war club horizontally across his body like a quarterstaff as he looks up 
And sees Bone Crusher. These guys are ninjas. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. In the last episode, we had uh, Springer, I think, cutting some people in half. Or no, no it was per- a blur. No, it was Perceptor. Perceptor, Perceptor of all cut, people. Yeah, cut two with some, in half. With some high yas. Yeah. And um, uh, Bone Crusher comes down on um, on Springer with a laser chainsaw-like weapon. It's flame teeth whirling. Springer blocks the chainsaw with his war club, forces Bone Crusher back, and then spins war club so that the handle gives an uppercut to Bone Crusher's jaw, driving him back. <laughs> Bone Crusher throws the laser, starts to throw the laser chainsaw like a spear, and it's over, Autobot. They're just inventing weapons, it's laser great. chainsaws. Oh, yeah. I would prefer if Perceptor like bored them to death with a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, the, the, he throws the, uh, the laser chainsaw, which uh, Springer dodges, and then hurls his war club like a javelin. And the javelin pierces Bone Crusher's torso and drives him back, nailing him to the wall. He's furious and starts pushing himself forward to get off the pin with an angry growl as Springer hurries to Hot Rod RC and Daniel. And uh, with a mighty effort, holding them... Oh, he grab, Cup grabs two Decepticons, holding them around the waist, lifts them above his head, and smashes them together until they uh, hit the ground uh, like a double-backed beetle, arms and legs working, going nowhere. So there's wow. a lot of melee Christ. in this one. Christ, Christ. Um, it's the, auto, the, the War for Autobot City Part 2. Yeah, it's it really is. Lot. It's so much. Um, I'm going to skip some more of this because there's like just more, some more crazy fighting. There's endless line of Decepticons are delivering and stacking Energon cubes under Scourge's direction as Galvatron sweeps into the scene followed Cyclonius. Where are they getting Cyclonus. these cubes from? From where? I don't know, man. Art these cubes cometh. Galvatron says, leave that. There are Autobots to destroy. But they came here to feed Ingester. Why yeah, not just I mean, I guess creep up and eat the planet with I guess everybody it's on be- it? I guess it's because the Autobots like are now, they've launched a counterattack, and so he's like, oh, we should crush these guys. All Ingester needs to do is come sink his mandibles into this planet, put it in his mouth like a sugar cookie, I don't even see and finish why, it off. I don't, sugar I don't even see why Ingester has, even gives a shit about having the Decepticons do anything. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> fly over the planet. Yeah. And this is where Scourge comes Seriously. in. And this is uh, in the script, he does a partial transformation, so his head rises above his vehicular mode, as though serving as the eyes for the expedition. I think they could probably see in vehicle mode. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Eh. Um, Blur is in. Oh, this is where Blur is trying to get the Dinobots into the shuttle. <laughs> We've, that's all happened before Wait Blur got the Dinobots in the shuttle. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, Springer comes so up. So now here's where the minute begins. Yes. I, I hate this. <laughs> Remember earlier when we talked about how much we loved it? Now this is a lot. I mean, there's now a I lot. Know. Maybe we'll grow. Maybe we'll grow to love this draft again. But right now, I hate it. It's too much. It is. And really, Ryan's skipping things. I'm skipping pages. <laughs> And then Daniel uh, goes with uh, hot. Rod. Actually, Springer takes um, uh, takes Hot Rod and or takes uh, Daniel. Um, the uh, RC or Cup and Hot Rod get into the Dinobot shuttle. Get the Dinobots in there. Um, he, Good uh, God! Scores transform into humanization mode and shouts orders, firing at Blur. Who blurs past them and RC, who also whips by. She doesn't RC by. I mean, we got Springer springing and, and Blur blurring. Blurring. It's fucking <laughs> crazy. Okay, she, she just and hot sexily rod. walks by. Yeah, she saw like she by. wants it. Like, yeah, right. Well, why is she dressing right. so sexy? Yeah, she doesn't right. want it. She's a woman. That's right. Um, basically, we have the same scene with Cup and 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 um, uh, Grimlock whenever they're lighting the shuttle. He even says Petro Rabbits of uh, Omicron Rada. Instead of uh, Alpha 9. Alpha 9, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah, in here it does say Hot Rod, Yahoo! We're (laughs) airborne! And Grimlock, Growl! (laughs) I'm glad we have that commonality. So they they boiled... From that, they bowled down to Aaron's version that you read. Which is what we saw on screen. Basically what we see on screen, yeah. God. So they got rid of uh, the hordes of Decepticons. They got rid of... Mountains of crazy action, karate, karate ninja shit going on. Mm -hmm. They got characters, Warpath, uh, Power Glide. Mm -hmm. They didn't show up. Uh, Basically, you had five Autobots and five Decepticons. That's not really true. Uh, Ten Autobots and really three Decepticons plus sweeps. Right. I mean, I feel like it was a good cut. This was too much. Even reading it, I'm like, God damn it. That's... We I'm trying to, to think. I mean, that was like Saving Private Ryan level battle detail. Mm-hmm. You know, that was uh, that was pretty. Intense. If this script had been done, it would be Saving Private Ryan length. 
<laughs> I wish this movie had been directed by Steven Spielberg. Like again, I am... actually Steven Spielberg produces the Bay movies. That's true. He does at least the first one. I don't know oh, how Jesus. much how involved he is on the. Well, other he made ones. a lot of money. He made a lot of money. Yeah, I, 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 I'm up to. I haven't even printed the whole script out. I'm up to uh, the last page I have here. We're up to page 133, and it's still not near the end of the movie that I've printed Ryan out. Ryan so. has a script nearly an inch thick that represents how much of the movie? Maybe three quarters. I would say three quarters. And this, this is the. Um, so this is like the original Ron Friedman draft. I think so. On the cover it says, New Draft, uh, April 24th, 1985. Completed April 27th, 1985. Okay. So it's three days of cocaine-fueled madness. Is that is that... So he, over a period of three days, he wrote this? I think basically there was a draft earlier, and then he changed that draft into this. Okay. So this isn't even the original, like... Who knows what that was like? I'd be. It's interesting. Uh, it would be. This is probably just corrected typos. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but okay. I mean, not really. There are a lot of. Typos. But this is like he liked. He's like okay. So he probably had turned in an earlier submission to the studio. Got some notes. Wrote. He this. got a lot more later on. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at a certain point, we still don't know the story. Ron Friedman. I. I it sounds like we've been knocking you a lot. If you ever but, do, no, I mean, get the opportunity to listen to this. We would love to talk to you and have absolutely. you on the show. I'd be curious to know. I wonder if anybody's really dug into like what that transition point between Friedman as the primary writer, and I, I think he's still. I mean, he's credited as the primary mm-hmm. writer, and then Flint Dilly as the story consultant. Well, like where that really. It sounds like Flint Dilly's job. In I want to read to slash. Did I it. want to read I Killed Optimus Prime. I mean, he's got a, he's, I don't know if it's published. We or talked not, about that before, but, but it was on the, but not Ron sure Friedman it came out. has book or. <laughs> yeah, you know. I think there was a Kickstarter or something, but I don't know if it ever came out. He's got something out there. I'd be really curious to read I don't, it. I don't think it got published. If I, I think I remember trying what to follow What if up on we it. can convince him to release it mm-hmm. exclusively through the Autopod Decepticast? Do you, how much money have you got in your pockets? Uh, I don't have any money. In my zero. I got about <laughs> I got about two hundred dollars in that box over there. That'll oh, probably really? Good to know. I got rid of my last cash today, getting my son a haircut. My cash. Now I got other. I got other. You know, means of paying. You're you not know. destitute. You can suck your dick. <laughs> so here, I'll just I'll just read this. This is from the tfwiki.net. Mm. Uh, Friedman produced two drafts for Transformers the movie. One about which little is known. That's the one before this one, perhaps. I assume. And the one which would be developed into the finished film. The script he turned in was judged (laughs) incoherent by writer-slash-story editor Flint Dilly and creative director Jay Bacall, who submitted their own script, The Secret of Cybertron, quote-unquote. But when it was turned down, Dilly spearheaded the rewriting of Friedman's script into the version seen on screen. Despite Dilly's involvement, Friedman had negotiated to receive sole credit as writer, so Dilly is only credited as story consultant for the film. But his name actually precedes Freeman's on screen, signifying the extent of his involvement. A similar situation situation arose in the production of G.I. Joe the movie, which was predominantly penned by story consultant, quote unquote, Buzz Dixon, but again credited huh. solely to, to Friedman. Friedman. Friedman's involved with G.I. Joe. So Friedman, I think we talked about this a little bit, is that Friedman worked he had himself a sweet deal when it came like with uh, with the union. And um, if what we are reading is Friedman's script, mm-hmm. I could say the word incoherent is a fair. I wouldn't say it's uh, incoherent. It's I would com- say it would be di- unanimatable. Yeah, right. di- difficult to <laughs> difficult to illustrate. Well, but, we've done the numbers, and this will cost us five hundred million dollars to make. But yes. at the same time, I will say that he's written it up here that you can extract something illustratable from it, which sure, is exactly sure. what, what Dilly, Dilly did. did. Well, and maybe that reflects my misunderstanding of kind of the the, the ranking in terms of uh, just uh, who, who, who reports to who in these situations. So like Flint Dilly as the story consultant or however he was credited, I think really he's kind of an editor. Like at yeah. the end of the day, Friedman reported to him is what I'm imagining. Is like Dilly called the shots Friedman turned something in. Dilly made something out of it. I think Dilly probably has a stronger, had a stronger role in terms of the overall direction, creative direction of the movie, Mm -hmm. uh, where Friedman is a writer. Yeah. Yeah. As much as we hear about Ron Friedman, I think think he's relatively accessible. Accessible. Hmm. 
Because I think he's willing to talk to anyone and everyone about himself. So <laughs> That sounds bad. <laughs> we we, we are that. never going to get him on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not listen to the podcast, he but we would like to interview going you. going to be on this show. I mean, if we could get them both on at the same time, that would be tense. And then we get him to wrestle? We need to start a new podcast, Transformers After Dark, or APDC After Dark. Mm. What are we calling that? They end up having yeah, sex. Well, they end up having sex with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, th- we've already insulted them. So it's them. just a podcast. They've bro, been insulted, just... or at least, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ron Friedman. I would see how Ron Friedman might feel as though he's been insulted. We've said some us. uncharitable <laughs> things that have been harsh, but, but I no, do, do no I want to understand him, though. I want to understand him. He seems like a likable guy. Sure. Oh, I think he'd be in a... Very entertaining. <laughs> I love that script. Yeah, he yeah. knows. He knows it's not good. <laughs> I, who doesn't? Oh who doesn't enjoy reading the scribblings of a madman? <laughs> it's like uh, Ted Kaczynski and his uh, Ooh, okay his manifesto. Yeah. This is much more readable than Ted Kaczynski's manifesto. It is a, a real snore fest. So, guys, uh, I heard a little knock on the door there. You know who I think it is trying to get in? All right, so, okay, we can... We can... I'm the ghost of the iconic moment! <laughs> you know? My, uh, my only moment... This is our first glimpse of Cup as the senile storytelling old coot That's that he true. is. Mm-hmm. My iconic moment is Grimlock, kind of like passively sitting at the console wanting Cup to tell a story. Um, I really didn't have an iconic moment for this one. I mean, it's fine. It's not my favorite moment because, again, we're still dealing with the Dinobots getting into the shuttle. I mean, I guess finally getting them in the fucking shuttle will have to be it because we can move on with the goddamn yes. movie. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, I think it's only time to talk about what happens on the next episode. Next time on the Autobot Decepticast. We're going to see that booster fire animation. Mm. One more time. Ooh. And the Autobots are going to fail to perform a pre-takeoff head count. And uh, we finish off with Earth and uh, Caleb will like this. We're going to head back into outer space. Yeah, and I do not... Space. I don't think we'll be returning to Earth, so it'll all be space from here on out. Finally. Listeners, do not forget about this listener appreciation event that we're trying to pull off here. Between now and December 25th, please rate and review us on iTunes. Send us a little note with your mailing address, and, uh, you know, we'll uh, send you a little something back at ya. Yeah, either and, uh, DM us on, on um, Twitter, or uh, send us an email at uh, autopoddecepticast at uh, gmail.com. Do one of those things, especially do one of those things if you're one of our international friends, because as we've spoken many times before, uh, it's difficult for us to track international reviews on iTunes. Do both. Because we'd like to increase our ranking in your respective country on iTunes, but we also want to be aware that you are uh, acknowledging that you like us. We like to be liked, don't we, guys? We like to be known that we're liked. <laughs> yeah, if you really, if you don't like us, that's fine. It doesn't have to be sincere. Don't tell us if you don't like us. If you want a gift that we won't tell you what, <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Because we don't entirely know. But you hate us. And you're going to give per- Perfect Strangers a your home address. This is the contest for I, you. I would say get a P.O. box <laughs> if you want some level of anim- anonymity. Here's what you got to do. It, or you know what? <laughs> Here's just, what you got to do. Or you know what? Just give us a random just give us a random address. And then check it every day? Just, no, no. They just say, here, I'll just send it here. We'll just send a, some weird rando will be getting like a, a special gift from us. I feel like after we've come hot on the heels of just mentioning Ted Kaczynski and now we're asking people to give us their address, <laughs> that it can't look good. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that back up <laughs> and making that connection. <laughs> All right, everybody. Listen to the show. iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and tune in. Follow us on our social media, Twitter. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all of them at apoddcast. And our web presence remains autopoddecepticast.com. Surely we'll have some exciting things to mm-hmm. extras to put up over yeah. there at the apoddcast.com. Yep. And some Unabomber related videos. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. rate, subscribe. Gifts coming your way. That's yeah. your address. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays to all. Gift is not in quotes as it would be if we were to Ted Kaczynski. It's just nope. a piece of poop. Oh, God, we've lost everything. <laughs> all right, we should stop. Bye, everybody. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> <laughs>
so many stories <coughs> uh, that emanate from that bat throwing things over that uh, oh, yeah. back fence. <laughs> yeah, I set that field on fire. I was there. Yep. I showed up. I showed up in time to see Ryan run out of the uh, down the stairs with a bat. You had on a, like a, a robe and a pot. <laughs> yeah. like so a, wait, like how a, did you set this on fire? I, I had shooting, some old fireworks and I was shooting them and I stopped. I, I had been like ten minutes and I stopped shooting them and I was yeah. drawing in, in the driest of summer. Yeah, it's like things. August. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real. It was, it was real smart. So he move. Caught, so he, I, and I look up and it's just I see fire out there. Yeah. And so I run down with a pot, a tiny he's pot like hitting full the, of water. He's like hitting the perimeter of this fire with a pot, and that's not working. And I say, I say, we need like a blanket or something. And you go and we get a blanket. We got a, the and also the rubber mat out of your truck bed. Oh, yeah. We got that rubber mat, and we were hitting it. And we, we put it out, and we ran back inside in time to uh, get back in the apartment and watch the fire department show up. Yeah, they slowly rolled up. <laughs> And it was probably 20 was feet big, in diameter. It was a big fire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing the both of you out there. Well, I, it panicking. Was, I wasn't panicking. Swinging wildly. I was helping, but I thought it was amusing. But he ran down the stairs when I was... I literally was walking up towards your apartment. And he was walking down the stairs and he was like, like I don't know. <laughs> I, fire! I, he's got a pan. Like a pan. Like a little one, like, like a little pot, pot. Like, like a sauce pot, like, like a sauce pot, like yeah. a sauce pan. And that pan was, was like, never the same. Wong, wong. The pot was never the same. 